cacao husk tea or cacao shell tea. I recently was asked about this particular item. Someone had come into a huge source of cacao shells, the husk that covers the cacao bean, that which we turn into chocolate. And she says, you know what? What can I do with it? I've heard about this idea of making tea. Is it any good? So in this video, I want to share with you exactly what I said to her and give you insight into the world of chocolate and in particular cacao because my answer was it depends. All right, let's get into it. Cacao, uh, as you may or may not know, and when I share my book, uh, comes from the pod, the cacao fruit. And uh, when that is ripe and it's harvested, here's a dried version of it, each pod contains anywhere from 30 to 50 be cacao beans. And when that fresh pod is sliced open, inside you will find the cacao fruit. So anywhere from 30 to 50 beans, and all these pictures that I've taken over the years, uh, you can see, you know, each bean is covered in, they just describe it as a, as a mucilage, this sweet, delicious fruit. And uh, first step of the process of taking cacao beans to a chocolate bar or anything else chocolate related, related is that it first goes through a fermentation process. And it's that sweet, delicious, juicy fruit that's covering the beans that initiates and feeds the fermentation, the bacteria that are gonna work on it. And humans discovered and figured out, you know, why they wanted to ferment cacao is that number one, it helped develop the flavor. Number two, it helps to make it more digestible and nutritious. So, you know, the seeds of plants, be they nuts or seeds or grains, humans figured out that fermentation helped deal with some of the anti-nutrients that they might contain. And these are just certain protective mechanisms like phytic acid uh, that, you know, favor the seed. And they're only going to release their nutrients or they'll bind on to nutrients uh, until the conditions are right for that seed to germinate. Its goal is to grow another plant. It's how it reproduces. And so it has these protective mechanisms, these anti-nutrients, well, they're anti-nutrients to us if we consume them in uh, an unprocessed form. There's a number of different ways that humans figured out how to intelligently process nuts, seeds, and grains to make them more digestible and more nutritious. And fermentation is absolutely one of those key processes. So cacao beans, those nuts, they go through a fermentation process. And uh, it's anywhere from three to five days, sometimes even longer. And typically it's done by uh, small holders, right? Like small farmers who don't have a huge budget. They're just working with what they have. So that can oftentimes literally look like, you know, banana leaves on the ground and cacao pods, you know, cut open the fruit, the beans, that mucilage, all that just kind of gets dumped onto the um, banana leaves and then ferments. And then each day it's the, the pile is kind of tossed and turned, mixed around as a part of that fermentation. And then after that, it then goes to a long, slow drying process. Now, if you think about, you know, the conditions of, of the tropics, you know, where cacao grows, which is 20 degrees north of the equator, 20 degrees south of the equator, it's hot, it's humid, it's very perfect uh, environment, you know, for the spontaneous fermentation, right? Wild bacteria and yeast, microbes, coming across something sweet, sugary, they're breaking down uh, that, consuming the sugars, the carbohydrates, and then release all kinds of wonderful beneficial byproducts uh, and the cacao seed or the bean gets transformed. And like I mentioned, different ways to do this, banana leaves on the ground in piles, places that I visited as well, uh, they have systems like bins or boxes, sometimes where it's like stepped up. So it's like uh, starts at the top, you know, ferments, and then instead of turning it, it's like they almost open a trap door and then it falls down to the next level. You know, it ferments in there for a day, down to the next level. So there's different kind of ingenious ways that uh, humans have coming up with this fermentation process. Now the second part, this long, slow dry, uh, again, if you're growing cacao in the tropics, one of the best places, you know, ingeniously think 
I was like, hey, where can I find a nice area to drive? And oftentimes it ends up being along the side of a road, just on the shoulder. And I've seen this in Costa Rica. I've seen this in other countries that I visited. Uh, and it makes sense, right? Like asphalt or concrete, something kind of like hard, dry, a nice surface area that uh, these beans after fermentation can then be spread out and then sun dried, air dried. Uh, there is a mix. Some of the facilities that I've also been to are inside covered areas with airflow below, airflow above for a nice kind of even dry. That's another way to do it. Um, but ultimately the end result after fermentation and most especially during this kind of open air drying uh, is that the, the cacao beans in that form are considered, at least by uh, Health Canada, CFIA, our regulators up here, contaminated foods uh, because of the microbes that have been on them, acted upon them, as well as what they've picked up, you know, open air drying process. And so all cacao that gets imported into Canada either has to be roasted, right? And that is considered a safe kill step Right? These, this bacteria, these uh, organisms, uh, not just from the fermentation, but even beyond, so things like E. coli, salmonella, um, you know, need to be dealt with. And Health Canada says, great, if you're just gonna roast, there's your kill step, now it's considered safe. Uh, alternatively, if you're not going to roast them, uh, which, you know, I do both. Sometimes I'll roast the cacao beans. Most of the time I don't. The chocolate that we're producing here at Light Cellar majority of it is unroasted so therefore you know how could we get away with using these cacao beans that are covered in you know harmful bacteria harmful microbes without roasting it and the answer is <laughs> we source cacao beans that specifically do not have microbes on them there's no mold there's no uh, microbes no salmonella no e coli so we have to produce uh, certificates analysis to demonstrate that because we're not going to that next kill step we're using it in an unroasted way now how does this all relate to uh, cacao bean cacao shell cacao husk tea well so after fermentation after drying we've got these beans which again most chocolate makers would consider you know contaminated something not uh, very clean and that their kill step is going to be roasting after roasting they'll then go through what's called crack and winnow so if we take a cacao bean which looks just like a like an almond right in that sense it's got this paper thin shell on it uh, which some beans are easier to break that off than others uh, by hand anyways typically you know the crack is it'll be smashed it'll be put through a mill something uh, to basically break that apart and you know this one here it just how happened i was able to keep the bean whole while removing that shell so there's the shell right so it's typically crack and then the winnow is just like blowing that off it's, it fans because obviously there's there's the heavy weight that drops down the wind blows the shell away and uh so within the cacao industry chocolate making industry there's oftentimes piles of the shells left over and there's typically, you know, I'm not sure about the nutrition, you know, there ha really has not been a lot of studies uh, of what is the nutrition in, in the cacao shell, the husk. Um, I'm sure there's a little bit of something, there's definitely a little bit of flavor. So there's recently been, uh, recently, you know, the last several years, uh, kind of an interest and a thought around turning this into a tea. So you can have, you know, piles of this and you just throw it in a bottle or put it into a pot, essentially hot water over top, and it creates a nice kind of earthy, chocolatey, almost coffee-like uh, type of, of beverage. And so it's become a little bit of a, a trend out there. Uh, it hasn't quite took uh, to any sort of a mass scale. So if you haven't heard of this, then, you know, there we are. That, that's proof of, of its non-wide acceptance. Um, but you know, some people are doing it. Now, what you have to consider though, is the source of the beans, right? So if you're using beans and the shells from beans that have those microbes on them, right? This is the idea of mycotoxins. So coffee is in that same 
category of having mycotoxins in one and that's you know probably something uh, we want to avoid so if it's from you know regular kind of conventional cacao beans have been cracked and winnowed even if they've been roasted so you don't have the live microbes but you still have that that residue and that can be that can often cause issues and people can have sensitivity to it so i wouldn't necessarily consume uh cacao husk tea from any old bean i'd want to find and work with uh, husks from ones like the ones that we source that have been done in a different way that have certificates analysis no mold no microbes like mycotoxin free then absolutely that cacao shell or husk would be great as a little tea as a little beverage so a bit of a long-winded answer but i think it's important to understand uh cacao as it moves through its journey through the supply chains and uh, what you're actually consuming or not when it comes to these types of things so all again all of our cacao is mycotoxin free mold free e. coli free salmonella free it's why we don't have to roast it i've spoke with other chocolate makers that is certainly not the case uh, they know how in their words how quote unquote how dirty uh, cacao beans can be just from where it comes from the processing of fermentation to drying uh you know put into sacks and you know transport all that stuff can be um and they're relying on that roasting that kill step uh but does it really do it and what are, where are those shells coming from right uh in order to be turned into a product like tea so Hope you enjoyed that. Hopefully it gave a little bit of insight. Let me know. Have you, have you tried the cacao husk tea, cacao shell tea? Let me know what you think. And uh, were you aware of this idea of this issue before uh, as it relates to just chocolate in general and cacao, but so specifically to the shells and the idea of the cacao husk tea? Let me know below and thanks for watching.